this is your boy Brogan Arc back again with another episode of Brogan Arc on Films and in this video I'm going to be giving my non-spoiler review of Capone the new Tom Hardy movie that just released uh, digitally probably about a day ago and it's a new movie that is directed by infamous director Josh Trank and if you don't recognize that name he directed uh, a great movie known as Chronicle, which I have not seen, but I've heard good things about it. And he's also directed a very terrible movie called Fat Four Stick, which I have seen, and it sucks. And this, he hasn't directed a movie since then. That came out in, I believe, 2015. And this Capone movie is his comeback film. Now, I remember vaguely hearing about this because it was like, oh, Tom Hardy, he's playing Al Capone. And he's like old and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay. Didn't really think too much about it. I was like, I guess I'll see that at some point. But as it got closer to being released and I found out, I didn't know at the time it was directed by Josh Trank, the guy who did those two movies, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out of my way to rent this. So I rented it off of Amazon Prime. Um, I could tell by certain other thumbnails from people that this was probably not going to be good. And I've seen the movie and I, I did, it's not that good. It's, this is not a good, if you want to make a comeback film, this is not a way to do it. This was uh, it's low budget. Um, Josh Trank, he wrote this, he directed this, and I believe he edited this. So he had full control of this film, unlike the bigger studio movies he made, like Fantastic Four and Chronicle. So he, you know, all of this is the stuff he wanted. And I didn't care for this film. It's not like the worst movie ever, but it's a weird, odd movie. Uh, the movie Capone focuses on uh, Alfonso Capone, aka Al Capone, uh, aka Scarface, notorious gangster, uh, mob boss during the uh, temperance movement, the temperance movement in Chicago, and this film really focuses on his last year of life, where he served his he served an eight-year sentence for tax evasion, and he's living with his family in. Uh, in isolation down in Florida in his mansion and he's losing his mind. His body is deteriorating. Um, he's dying from uh, from syphilis. He had syphilis as a, as a teenager and he just never got it cured and over the time it's been rotting his brain and he's suffering from dementia and he's also in this film he's being haunted by his past and I do mean haunted. This movie is somewhat of a horror film which I was not expecting that. If you have not seen the trailer for this movie I would honestly say don't watch the trailer. I didn't see the trailer, and it's not because the trailer is going to ruin the movie for you, but the trailer is actually really good. The trailer is going to trick you into thinking that this movie is awesome. It is not. Like, everything in the trailer happens in the movie, but it's a good trailer where it tricks you to think certain things are going to be way more badass than what it is. It's not. Um, the pace of this movie is kind of slow. Not in a bad way, because whenever it does get really slow and dry, something odd and interesting happens you know throughout the movie he's having these weird hallucinations and he's losing his damn mind but uh it, and it's kind of it's kind of weird so let's let's get into the cast you of course have your lead uh fawn uh Fonz, played by tom hardy who is a treasure in the world of acting and this man is probably one of the most dedicated actors out there right now um this when i started this film there's this thing I have, I always have this problem with a Tom Hardy movie, where whenever he's in it, most of the time, I cannot understand what the hell he's saying, and this is one of those movies. Uh, so I had to restart it and put subtitles on so I can understand what the hell he was saying, because of course, Tom Hardy, he, he, there's three things he really loves when it comes to acting. Uh, does he wear something to cover his face, or some weird wacky makeup, some weird type of device to cover his face? Can he do a wacky voice? And B, can he do like some wacky physical stuff? Not necessarily comedy, but something over the top and physical. And he, he has all three of those things with this film, playing this old, well, he's not really an old man. He's like 48, but he looks like he's 85 because his body is just deteriorating. The way he's talking, he's got a kind of, mum, he mumbles and mutters a lot. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, what the fuck is this? And blah, blah, blah. Uh, Tom Hardy, in this movie, I feel like he does the perfect, um, the perfect audition to play the Penguin, 
like I believe in the new Batman movie, I believe Colin Farrell's playing the Penguin, but they fucked up. Tom Hardy should have been the Penguin because he's basically the Penguin in this movie, especially the Burgess, the Burgess Meredith version from the 60s. He's the Penguin. He's rah, 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 smoking a cigar, sh shuffling around and grunting. He's the Penguin. He's he's not Al Capone. He's the friggin' Penguin in this movie. And he's just, he's eating up the scenery. And there's a lot of weird sort of humor with him because his body's deteriorating, so he's like shitting on himself. And I guess it's supposed to be funny. It's not really that funny. It's, it's more like, like the timing on it is not funny. And it's, it's pretty sad. And there's one moment that's, if you've seen Breaking Bad, it's sort of similar to a scene in Breaking Bad, but it's not as badass or uh, comical. So it's just kind of flat. And yeah, it's weird. So then you have uh, Linda Cardellini, who plays May, who is uh, Al Capone's wife. And she's not in this movie a lot, but she's really good. She, the role, she, she's just his wife. She's his kind wife who's struggling to take care of her husband, who, you know, has given them this life. Because they're still living the good life, but it's like it's going away because his money's running low. And she's struggling to take care of her husband. And she has some really good acting moments. Um, then there's uh, Matt Dillon, who's in the movie. He plays a uh, character named Johnny, who was an old friend of Capone's, who comes into his life to kind of help watch over him as he's slowly dying. There's also Kyle McLaughlin, who plays Carlock, who is a doctor, who is, he's Al Capone's doctor, who's there to check up on him and make sure he's doing all right. And he, he does a little more in the movie, but he's a fine character. And, uh... There's, that's like the main character. It's a small budget film. But one of the big plot is basically Al Capone's dying. But there's this rumor that he has $10 million hidden somewhere. So everyone is trying to, the FBI is monitoring him. Some of his family is trying to figure out like, hey, you know, is this true? Where did you hide the money? And Capone himself is trying to figure out where this money is. And that's like the central long-term plot of him shuffling but most of it is just him wandering around hallucinating and a lot of crazy stuff happening and it's i wouldn't really call it entertaining it's kind of slow and you know it's very slow but there's some wackiness that happens it's way more bloody and violent than i thought it was going to be it is a rated r movie and like i said it has some horror elements to it but it's it's just weird um is it worth the because it was 10.99 or it was it worth it i would say no, but that that's a decent price kind of like if you can find it lower rent it but it's, it's nothing you have to rush out to see unless you just want to see some wacky tom hardy just fucking around on camera like this is one of those kind of reminds me of sucker punch where it's like who gave this director money to make this movie like why was this made like josh trank is an odd guy and it's like why was this his comeback like what was so special about the story where he felt he needed to do this but he was dedicated tom hardy was dedicated uh and everyone else was dedicated but it's like this was a weird uh step out of the game my grade for capone 2020 is a d plus or a four out of ten this was not good it, it, I could see this being one of those movies where people are like, oh, it's so bad, it's good, or it's just one of those fun, bad movies. It, as a fun, bad movie to watch, yeah, I could see that. Because it, it does have those weird moments of Tom Hardy just losing his damn mind, and then everyone just kind of, their reactions to what he did. Because there's a lot of moments where he's just freaking out, and it's just kind of, like, as a clip, like, as clips, they're good, but as a whole movie, it's just kind of over. It's not too long though, it's like an hour and 43 minutes, thank God, because I'm afraid it's going to be a two hour movie, but it's, it's, you know, it's a little bit longer than the standard film, so it doesn't necessarily overstay as welcome, which is a good thing. And uh, those are pretty much my non-spoilery thoughts. I'm going to get into a little bit of spoilers after this, so if you don't want spoilers, just, you know, like this video, uh, share it, and subscribe to the channel, and uh, thanks for watching. And if you want spoilers, stay tuned. I'm going to get to some quick spoilers after this. Okay, so I'm going to get to some quick spoilers. Nothing too extensive. So, uh, Matt Dillon. The, the thing with his character. Okay, so. It was interesting, but it was weird at the same time. So, Matt Dillon plays 
this character named Johnny, who was an old friend of Al Capone's after he like has his, he's like pissing and shit. Now he can't control his bowels. So the doctor who is Kyle McLaughlin is like, hey, you should call up, you should surround him with people that are familiar to him. So next thing you know, we see Matt Dillon's character who's banging some random chick. He's just banging this chick. We can't see him, but then he gets on the phone and he's talking to the wife, allegedly. And he's like, hey, I gotta go to Florida. So he shows up in Florida and he's hanging with Al Capone. Capone kind of remembers him a little bit. And he later on, he tells him they're fishing and he tells him about the uh, $10 million that's hidden. And, you know, Johnny's like, whoa, is that real? And like Capone's like, yeah, but I can't remember where I hid it. So that's when that, and this is probably like 30 minutes well, probably it's, it's fairly into the movie when that plot point finally pops up about the whole money is hidden. So as the film goes on, Johnny's there, you know, in the background hanging out with him. They're watching The Wizard of Oz and he's singing the songs. So anyway, this is all. This is great. this is my favorite moment in the film. He's sitting on the backyard porch basically, and they're talking about The Wizard of Oz. He starts shouting at his wife and he's like, "Hey, May, come in here and give me some." Get some bourbon. She's like, I'm not. You don't need any more bourbon. He's like, it's not for me. It's for my friend. And she looks and she's like, yeah, whatever. But then we realize that Johnny does not exist. Johnny is not there. And he gets into this argument with his wife. He starts talking shit about her. She slaps him like twice, and then he falls out. He gets a concussion. It's, it's a great scene. It's like the best scene in the film. So basically, from that point, we, we realize Johnny doesn't exist. So we go. There's another moment where he's having a hallucination. He's in a nightclub, Louis Armstrong is there, everybody in the club gets shot up. There's this whole moment where it's this guy who has his face wrapped up and he gets stabbed to death. And it's just random. And we find out he had a stroke. Then later, like this is later in the film, um, Tom Hart, uh, Capone is in the bed and then Johnny pops back up. And he's talking with him and basically we find out that Johnny did exist. He was um, a close friend to Al Capone, who Capone had killed because he was skimming money from the top, so Capone killed him, and he's being haunted by his ghosts, and he's kind of trying to help him find where the money is, but we don't, the movie never confirms, you know, if it exists, but it's like this whole thing, he's, he's a ghost, and it's a weird scene, he cuts his eyes out and gives it to him, it was weird, like I said, there's some horror elements, but one of the better, the second best part in this film is when he Capone loses his mind and he has a gold-plated Tommy gun and he's just shooting at people on his property like he's got a lot of his goons there and he does he's just losing his mind he like shoots the gardener and he's shooting people if you look at the trailer it, it's like whoa Capone he's got a carrot in his mouth that's another thing he's got a freaking carrot in his mouth because that was something Trank added because it was like he thought it was funny I just read this because um, he can't smoke cigars so now he's walking around with thick ass carrots in his mouth thinking it's a cigar so he's out there shooting his Tommy gun and in the trailer it looks cool but the thing they don't show you is that he's wearing a bathrobe but he's wearing no pants he's like in an old man diaper stumbling around just shooting at me it's so it's like one of the craziest goofiest things you'll see probably all year it's worth checking out if, you, if they can find that clip without watching the entire movie with no context it's hilarious and it's, it's, just, it's a great moment, but like those were some of the quick spoilers. There's some other stuff that happens I can talk about, but like those are the main things. It's a weird ass movie. Um, check it out if you want to. I can't necessarily recommend it as quality, but if you want to watch a good, bad movie, check out Capone. So that's all I have to say. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, stay tuned and stay tuned for more videos. Getting back into the movie reviews, there's some more other movies I want to see that are being released on uh, VOD, so I'll start checking some of them out. But uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more videos. Peace.